it's, it's, I'm so excited to see so many people here for the purpose of liberating Mumia Abu Jamal. When, I, when, we, when Mumia and I wrote that book, I had, I had met Mumia and to me, he was just a case. He was a case that I've been working on since I was a kid. He was a cause, he was a struggle, he was something worth working on. But for the last two, three years, I've had the opportunity to spend time with Mumia, to talk to Mumia every Friday. Y'all messed up my call. <laughs> and over the course of that time, I've come to understand him as a human being, as a person, as a father, as a husband, as someone who needs to be home, as someone whose family needs him home, as someone whose community needs him to be home. So, so easily we make these people into cases, but these are people. We cannot allow the state to turn these people into objects, these people into chattel. It is our responsibility to keep the spotlight on their fundamental sense of humanity. And that's what we're here to do tonight, to remind the world that those people who are in cages and dungeons, not just in the United States, but in Guantanamo, all around the globe, in fact, those individuals are, in fact, human beings. And on Wednesday, we had an enormous victory for those human beings, indeed, for all of humanity when the Supreme Court made a decision back in uh, April and when uh, the denial was made in October when we had another victory on, uh, on Wednesday, we had a sense of joy. We had a sense of success and indeed we should reward ourselves because we made that happen. We made that happen. Seth Williams didn't make that happen. But Abraham didn't make that happen. The Supreme Court didn't make that happen. Any law, any struggle, any victory we have had, they have all been co-signed in ink. They have been written in the blood of people who have been willing to sacrifice and struggle. Wednesday was 30 years worth of struggle. Wednesday was 30 years worth of sacrifice. Wednesday was 30 years worth of bloodshed. Wednesday was 30 years of suffering. Wednesday was 30 years of community. That's what Wednesday was. But the family, we keep we can't stop there. No. We can't stop there. 30 years is a long time to struggle. But we can't stop there. We should celebrate Wednesday. We need to pat ourselves on the back. We need to stop on the steps sometime and catch our breath before we keep climbing. But 30 years is a long time to be haunted by death row, no doubt. But 30 years is a long time to be incarcerated for a crime you didn't commit. 30 years is a long time to be away from your family. 30 years is a long time to be away from all of this. So we have to think about what the next phase of our struggle is. Not just for, for, for Mumia, but for all political prisoners. And when I say political prisoner, I'm saying every black body caged in the United States of America is a political prisoner. So what do we do? We can leave here feeling good, we can leave here feeling happy, we can even shout. But that ain't gonna liberate political prisons, that's not gonna get the work done. We need to do something else. What is the next stage? I'm gonna take my seat in a minute, but I want us to talk about what do we do when we leave here, family? The first thing we must do is ask different questions. We can open up the Philadelphia Daily News and see Seth Williams and say, oh my God, Seth Williams got some religion. Seth Williams got some heart. Seth Williams got a conscience and he decided to stop pursuing this. You could even believe his press release and say he didn't want to bog down the courts anymore. They've been fighting for Mumia's execution for 30 years. You're telling me another 180 days would have bothered them? No! The state doesn't have feelings, it has interests. It has interests. The state had an interest in not having any more evidence into a hearing. The state had an interest in silencing the conversation of Mumia Abu Jamal. The state had an interest in thinking that if we take death off the table, we'll stop fighting for his life. But we can't stop there. We have to ask different questions. Why is the state doing this now? Correct. But we have to broaden that conversation. We have to thicken our analysis so that we don't just exhaust us at the level of Mumia Abu Jamal because it ain't just about Mumia, although it is about Mumia. We have to ask ourselves, how do we end up in 2011 with 2.5 million black bodies incarcerated? 
Talk to me. When there were only 250,000 incarcerated in 1967, even 1970, how do we increase the prison population tenfold? <laughs> do we create a generation of criminals? Or do we create a state that is committed to criminalizing black bodies? We have to stop that. We look at drug use, we look at all these so-called social crimes. If I teach at Columbia University. If I went to my campus right now, you know how many people I could arrest for public drunkenness, disorderly conduct, simple possession of marijuana? Most of them, <laughs> including some of the faculty. Don't check my top drawer, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but we ain't looking there. 70% of New York State prisons come from three counties, and it ain't Westchester. We have to change the logic of the day that says that black bodies are worthy of incarceration, containment, and even lethal force. We have to change that by asking different questions. Stop asking what it means to drive while black and start asking what it means to patrol while racist. Ask a different question. Ask dangerous and counterintuitive questions and not just the white folk. Go all the way down to D.C. and ask the same question to the Negro in charge. Allegedly. Ask different questions. Ask why we have first class jails and second class schools. These are the questions that we must ask, but once we ask these critical questions, we must place them squarely on the laps of people with power. That means we must act bravely. We must organize. We must continue to struggle. I go around this country, we have 50 black people in 25 organizations. Everybody president and vice president. We must begin to come together, build, don't just jo build organizations, join organizations, sacrifice for organizations, work for organizations, even if you don't get the microphone, family. We must do this work. As I conclude, James Baldwin said, those of us who know the truth and do nothing are worse than the murderers hired in our names. He said, if you know the truth, then we must regard your life as if it were our own because it is. And we must block the corridor to the gas chamber with our very bodies. Because if they come for you in the morning, surely they will come for us at night. We blocked the corridor for Mumia. We, must, we didn't get a chance to block the corridor for Troy Davis, but there won't be another Troy Davis. There won't be another Mumia. We will block the corridor to the gas chamber for every